Hi, I'm Bob Canote, and in this episode of the Camp Chaos Chronicles, we're going to be talking about a component of the Jaguar V12 cooling system that, in my view, doesn't get enough press when it comes time to talk about overheating in that engine. Thermostats. Dang it. I'd like to talk about a few things before we get started here on the video. First of all, there's a problem with my comments, uh, being able to actually respond to them specifically. And I can't click on the notifications button and respond to the uh, comments that have been made that day. So what I need to do is I need to go back to individual videos and make comments there. And that's that's taken a lot more time than uh, I really have to do this at this point. But that's going to get better because the second thing I'd like to talk to you about is the fact that I have the past month been dealing with a uh, fairly significant health issue that is not life-threatening at this point, but I'm going to have to take some time off from the website, uh, jaguarpreserve.com. So if you had planned on uh, purchasing something in the next month or so, um, it's going to be a while before he can actually deliver for you because I'm going to have to lay low for a certain amount of time and recover from some surgery. So uh, again, it's not life-threatening. Uh, at this point, we need to, need to take care of it though. Now the good news there is that I'm going to be able to spend a lot of seat time at my computer editing video. And I've got a number of videos still from last year, believe it or not, that I really was hoping to fit them in a more timely ordered release that made some kind of sense, but the fact is we're coming up on season four after the first of the year, 2023, and we still haven't gotten to them yet. So what I'm gonna have to do is just kind of take and uh, you know, dump those videos as best I can. They're champ car videos and uh, videos that relate to renovating the hubs on the uh, Jaguar XJS and, and just a number of things that aren't really going to fit next year. So it's going to be sort of a video dump. I'm going to do the best I can, but, uh, you know, I think you'll find it interesting, but there's not going to be maybe any rhyme or reason to the order here. So that's just the way it's going to have to be. Another thing that i like to talk to you about is the fact that 95% of you people who are watching this video right now are not subscribers and recently I have monetized this channel and it started to bring in some money not a lot but some and I'd like to actually uh, turn that channel into something beyond an advertisement for jaguarpreserve.com I'd like it to be a profit center in itself which would enable me to justify devoting more time to it which I really enjoy doing if you would subscribe like and leave comments that would really be great help us help us out uh, to our goal of actually making some money with this thing that's all i got to say at this point so let's get to the fun stuff now we've all had experience with thermostats if nowhere else other than in our homes or in our apartments we use that little dial on the wall to regulate how comfortable we are in our home uh, we don't want to be too hot in the summer we don't want to be too cool in the winter so this does the same thing. This regulates how comfortable your engine is. And your engine operates best in a fairly narrow range of temperature. Above that range, if the engine's running too hot, those of us that have owned a number of Jaguar V12s over the year knows that that's a really bad thing. Because what can happen, among other things, is through a series of heating and cooling cycles, you can have a valve seat drop out when the engine isn't running because the valve seat only has about a three thousandths of an inch interference fit when they press them in at the factory. And when that valve seat drops out and the piston comes up and bangs the valve against that seat, it breaks it up and it kind of goes throughout the engine and nothing good happens when the valve seat drops. So we want to avoid that. Uh, if the engine is running too cool, it doesn't run as efficiently as it could. Uh, you can get contamination in the oil, water vapor, um, 
uh, unburned fuel, and it just doesn't produce the power that it would otherwise. So it's really important to keep that engine temperature within a certain range. So exactly how do these things work? So an automotive thermostat is a very simple device, and these things haven't changed for, I don't know, 70 years. They operate all pretty much the same. If we look in here, we can see that there's a copper capsule, and then inside of this capsule is a very specialized kind of wax. It expands as it's heated at a very controlled rate. And fitting in the end of this tube, you can't see it here, but up here, you can see that there's a pin, and that pin goes in the end of this capsule. And the end of this capsule has a round disc on it, which is a valve, that the opening of which determines how much coolant is going past the thermostat and to the radiator to be cooled. So initially, the thermostat is closed, and what that does is prevents coolant from circulating through the radiator. As the coolant starts to warm up, the wax inside of this capsule begins to expand, and that pin, which goes into the end of the capsule, serves as a piston and it starts to get pushed out from the capsule, except that it's held in place by this bracket. It's the capsule that does the moving. And it pushes that round disc up there against this spring, and it opens and allows coolant to flow. And the warmer the coolant gets, the bigger the opening is. And uh, eventually it gets to the point where the engine reaches operating temperature, and this thing quits opening. And if you're, for example, going up a mountain and you're using more power and generating more heat, the coolant gets hotter, the wax expands more, opens the valve, thereby maintaining a fairly constant engine temperature. You're going down the other side of the mountain, less power, more air flowing through the radiator, probably faster, and uh, the wax begins to cool as the coolant cools, and it then begins to move the valve to the closed position. Very simple. Now we got something different here in the Jaguar V12, and I'm not sure that there's other engines that use this, uh, this technology, but what we've got here is a disc which also is attached to the capsule. And as that wax expands, not only does it cause the capsule and the valve to move and the valve to open, it causes this disc to move as well, this way. Now if you look at this, this is a thermostat casting on the front of a coolant rail. And what we've got here is the thermostat fits in like that. The water is coming from the cylinder head here and it butts up against this thermostat. Being that the thermostat is closed, it can't go to the, to the radiator. And that's what you want when you're trying to get the engine to warm up. You see that hole right there? That's the bypass port. And what that does is allows coolant to escape from behind this thermostat, goes through that hole, comes out here, and it goes to the water pump. And as long as the valve is closed, that's what's going to happen. It's going to be recirculating from the cylinder head through the block, through the cylinder head. And when the engine starts warming up, this little valve right here, the disc on the end, is going to gradually close that port. And eventually, if this thing is doing its job, when the engine gets up to operating temperature, that hole will be shut off. This valve will be open, coolant then will be able to come out and go through the radiator, get cooled, and go back to the engine. One more thing that I should mention about these thermostats before we go on is that there is a little check ball right there. And most of them will have this. What this does is when the engine is running and the thermostat is closed, what will happen is that check ball will be forced shut. And no coolant will be coming out of that hole right there. But when the engine isn't running and it's cold, what can happen is this thing is loose and any air in the system that accumulates there uh, can be bled off to the rest of the system. Not all of them will have it. In this case, where they do have that check valve, that thing needs to be located upward when you install the, uh, install the thermostat. The Jaguar V12 is different from other engines in a number of respects, 
and one of those is the cooling system. Now you can see right here that we have a thermostat housing on the B side that fits in that triangular shape casting and then we got another one over here on the A side and these large openings that you see on both uh, on both housings or both castings those go to the radiator and right here that is where the coolant comes out for the bypass circuit on both sides and you can see that there is a black tube here that connects both sides so the bypass coolant comes out and it goes to the water pump which is right here and when the engine is cold the water pump drives coolant through the block up through the heads on both sides into the coolant rail there's four ports on the cylinder head that those two castings attach to and when the engine is cold the coolant butts up against the back side of the thermostat, goes through the bypass port, and comes out there and goes through the tube and back to the water pump. And it continues to do that until the thermostat begins to open and close the bypass port. Now, a problem arises if the thermostat is malfunctioning. If that little valve on the back side that right there doesn't go all the way back to close off that bypass port. Okay, so how do you determine that that's the case? Now, if you've got, if you've been following the video series that we've uh, been presenting over the past three or four videos, you know that this is one of our last resorts, figuring out whether the thermostats are working or not. And basically, it involves taking the thermostat and doing some very basic tests on it. So how do you do that? This thermostat has seen better days. So here's how we're going to test these thermostats. First of all, what I have here is a cross-sectional drawing, albeit crude, of this thing right here. This thermostat fits inside of the housing like that. There's a little lip on the edge there for it to, for it to nest in. And now the distance between the back of that ledge right there, which is where this flange on the thermostat fits, the distance from there to the face of the bypass port is 1.650 inches. Now I measured this from here to here, and that is 1.235, yep. And what that means is that this thermostat has to close 415 thousandths of an inch, uh, almost 7 sixteenths of an inch, in order to close off that port. So how can we test that? So these thermostats have been steeping at 212 degrees for the past 10 minutes or so, which means that they should be fully open. Now, what I've done is I've taken my digital caliper and set it to 1.650. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take these out one by one and see if they pass or see if they fail. That one is a definite pass. That one is a fail by about three sixteenths of an inch. That one passes. Uh, that one's coming up a little short. That one's a pass. That one is borderline. In fact, I'd call that a fail. 
Yeah, definitely. Although it's starting to cool down. <clears throat> they start cooling immediately, so you gotta measure them quickly. That one's a pass. That one is an abject failure. This one passes. So out of the two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine that we tested, we've got five that passed, four that failed. Now the question you might be asking yourself right now is, what is the big deal regarding that measurement of 1.650 from there to there? Well, if it's less than that, there's two problems. First of all, this disc isn't going far enough out in order to close off that bypass port, which means that you're getting coolant that should be going to the radiator, going directly to the pump back into the block. That's not good. You can imagine that one thermostat that I had that was about three eighths of an inch short, how much coolant's going through the bypass. The other thing is that if this valve isn't going as far as it should, neither is the one up here that's doing the uh, major portion of the modulation of engine coolant temperature. So it is a big deal, it's gotta be right. So what we've got here is a good news, bad news story. The good news is that both thermostats that I pulled out of old techs passed with flying colors. The bad news is both thermostats that I pulled out of old techs passed with flying colors. Well, why do I say that? Well, the good news is I got a couple of good thermostats here. Uh, I put a couple of new ones in the car just to just to see what the result would be. And on the recommendation of an, a couple of guys who had an overheating problem that was related to thermostats, they replaced it with the Gates number 33188 thermostats, and that solved the problem. So I got a couple of those in there. The problem is, based on these tests, I don't look for that to make any difference. The only thing that's left is the radiator. And uh, that's a radiator that was reconditioned three years ago and sat on my test stand for two years. So. I don't know how that's going to be the problem either. And plus the fact that outside, even if I did take the radiator out and clean it up, it's 35 degrees out there and it's not going to overheat anyway. So it happens sometimes around here when, when there's so much to do that, you know, some things take a little bit longer than you like, like a month. So anyway, if you like these videos, like, subscribe, and leave some comments down below so we can know what we can do to do what we do better. And we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.